Godzilla, Kong, I mean, before you got into this film and you were trying to gain this, the, garner the size of them in your mind, before they gave you a laser pointer or a little tennis ball to look at, how big did you think they were going to be versus how big they actually are in their dimensions? It's so funny because it just goes to show how your brain has a sense of uh, dimension and then it's totally off. When you see it in real life, you're like, wow, that is huge. Um, so I didn't expect it to be ever that big. And it was so cool because I was terrified. I remember when I have this first few lines that I say, who was the idiot with this idea? Um, I was like, what is the idea? Is it too big? What is happening? Is he in the boat? Like a lot of these things you're unsure of what's going to look like at the end of the day. So I was so excited and the scale of this movie is gigantic. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's true too. Not only that, but the story in itself too, which it blows my mind. Um, the fact that this is a tight 145 really, uh, and the amount of places we go. I mean, when you start to read the script, were you surprised by how many different things happen within this script? Oh my God. Yes, and I was so excited to see the outcome because obviously, shockingly, we weren't there. Um, so it was really exciting to see the final um, result. And it, it was curious because these are all made up places and there's no real context within what's going to look like. So it was exciting as an actor because you just let your imagination run wild and you're able to just play as a little kid of like, oh, I think this is going to look like this or that's going to look like that. And eventually just seeing the outcome and what technology is capable of doing is really cool. Now, can you give us a little insight into how you saw Maya? I saw Maya as this, obviously she runs Apex company with her father. She's a point for Apex and she's an executive slash pilot. She's very smart. She's a know-it-all. And while being a know-it-all, it comes across like a type A condescending type of woman, but it came with a lot of comedy and it allowed me to really play around with the sarcasm that she, I think there's a lot of ignorance slash naiveness towards uh, the world of, of Titans. She's to, so tech savvy. And I saw her as like a little bit of a Gen Z, you know, she's like tech savvy. She's smart. She knows all about the important things, but when it comes to like nature in the real world, she's clueless, not that Gen Z's are, but I feel like they're more technologically driven. So it was fun because it allowed me to be a little bit more silly and goofy and, and all around to, to play with that. Like, what's this, what's that, what's going on? What is happening? You know, that was really fun. Very cool. Uh, the last thing I want to ask is, are you still filming Ambulance? Because I believe you play an EMT and it looks yeah. from, the, from the images, it looks like not only a lot of fun, but also like very, very high paced kind of suspense and things are always going to be moving. I mean, it's Michael Bay. <laughs> if it's not exploding or moving, it's not a Michael Bay movie. Um, it is. I just finished. Uh, I just wrapped Ambulance last weekend and actually this weekend. And it was great. I'm so excited. It's going to be a great, you know, movie. I hope um, I had a great time. I felt so honored to play an EMT slash paramedic, especially in the time that we're living right now. Um, it was something that made me gravitate towards this role. And I I think people are going to really like it. I mean, I don't want to spoil or get ahead of it. So we will talk about this next year. Very, very cool. Let's talk then. Until then, I hope everyone in your world is happy and healthy and have a great day. Likewise. And make sure to invite everyone to watch Godzilla vs. Kong in theaters. <laughs> in theaters. IMAX especially. It's going to be incredible. <laughs> very cool. Have a great day.